another video in this video we're going to write the smart contract for accounting industry in the last video we had written the smart contract for inheritance if you haven't watched i'll link in the i button on the description so you guys can follow that in this video i'll show you that how you can structure the entire smart contract when it's come to financial sector so this one is going to be a very important topic and if you guys want me to build a smart contract uh if you guys want me to build the entire project out of this smart contract then do let me know in the comment section i'll build on top of that okay so let's start the smart contract and then we're going to analyze it and we're going to test this contract so let me give this comment accounting contract because that's what we're going to build right now we have to provide the license identifier and we have to take the pragma solidity version and the version we're going to take 8.0 now we have to give the name to our contract you can call whatever you want but i'm calling counting it's absolutely your choice no burden on you and now we have to define the couple of state variables and here the data we're going to structure we're going to take a struct and we're going to assign multiple properties multiple data in that struct okay so we'll say transaction and it will have a different data type so it will have a unt which will be amount it will have the address this will be the sender and it will have the address recipient receiver the one who will receive the fund and it will also contain the information about the timestamp that when the transaction is happening and it will also contain the time of the description so sometime what happened that we have to provide some sort of small message for that particular transaction so that's the data we want to give uh, it, it's also optional but it's always better that you have to provide small description about the transaction so that's the description we have so this is the entire struct we have taken for the data type and now we have to come here here we have to create a mapping and it's going to return a unt We'll provide an address and we'll run a unt and we're going to call it balance so this will give us the balance of the particular user now let's come here here we're going to create an array of the transaction so here we have taken the transaction extract and here we are creating a transaction array and that we're going to push all the transaction it will be public and it will have the transaction okay so in that way we can easily able to call this transaction and we can able to have all the transaction which is done in the smart contract so that looks pretty fine let's come here we can take the address public honor so like whoever will deploy the contract we have to make him honor so now we have to come here here we have to initialize couple of events so whenever any transaction will happen we have to keep the track of that data in an event so if you want to take the data from the blockchains you can access the data based on the event or you can access the data based on the array you have both the options but it's always better that you have to initialize the event and that is cheaper when it's come to storing the data in the contract so let's define the events we'll have the deposit so we'll have to pass all of this data address account and amount we have to have the withdrawal event so amount and we'll have the account and amount so these are the event we have now we have to have a transaction event so whenever any transaction will add it we have to initialize this event i'm going pretty fast here because these are the repetitive things we have and in this transaction event we have to pass assign all the data we have assigned in our struct so these are the three events we have and now we have to define our constructor in this constructor we have to only update the owner of the contract and that's the only thing we have to do and now we have and now comes the most important part we have to initialize write down all the function which allow us to make all of these things happen so let's write one function at a time so let's declare a function but before we declare a function we have to declare a modifier because certain function we want to restrict for the owner so let's quickly clear the write the modifier so we have to say message dot sender is going to be owner otherwise we have to throw this error message okay that looks pretty fine this is the modifier we have and now we have to write the very first function we'll say functions deposit so this function is going to be a public and anybody can deposit the fund into the contract so we'll say public payable and first thing we have to do is we have to check for the condition so whatever message dot value should be greater than zero because if it's zero or less than zero we don't want to make the transaction happen then okay we have to stop the function straight away and so the user cannot pay unnecessary gas fee the amount must be greater than zero that's the first check we are doing and then we are simply going to update the balance of the user in the contract once we update the balance we have to initialize the deposit event we have created that looks pretty fine and that's the only thing we have to do in the very first function deposit now let's create a second function we'll call withdraw function and that we have to take the amount from the user which he want to withdraw from the contract we'll say public 
and here we can come here we can make the condition so the amount should be greater than zero okay if he really interested in withdrawing the fund then he has to provide at least something to withdraw he can't withdraw zero so we have to throw the error message and once we fulfill this condition we have to check one more condition that whatever balance he is trying to withdraw he has or not so if he has the balance then we want to make the transaction happen but if he doesn't have the balance then we have to throw this error message that insufficient balance now once we fulfill all of these condition we have to simply update the balance in the contract we have to simply subtract because when he will deposit he will have the fund but when he will withdraw we have to subtract it so once we subtract it and we have to simply make this payable so we have to transfer the fund from that contract to the address user and then we have to simply initialize the withdrawal event we have so these are the two functions we have created now let's come here now we have to add the add transaction so the user can call this function and they can make the transaction so in that we have to pass all of these data receiver amount descriptions and it's going to be a public so anybody can call it here we have to make the condition that the amount should be greater than zero that's the common check we can do okay so that's the check we have done with that now we have to do the other check so mess balance dot matter sender is going to be the uh, amount greater or equal to the amount okay that looks fine insufficient balance that's also looking good now let's say balance message dot sender we have to simply subtract it the amount and now we have to simply transfer the fund to the receiver and here we have to make the transaction and we're going to push all this transfer data into our array and we have to simply update that amount message dot sender receive here and the block timestamp and the descriptions so all of these data we are up updating into our struct and then we are simply calling this transaction event and passing all of this data so we are updating the length whatever the length then we have to amount sender receiver block timestamp and the descriptions looks pretty fine to me this function now let's come here let's write one more function get transaction count so this will allow us to get to see that how many transfer of the funds we have done in the contract it will give us the length so it's we want to return the unt and we're going to simply return the transaction length that looks fine and let's create one more function this will call get transaction by id so every single will every single transaction will have a, its unique id so if you want to find out that i have the id and i want to find the data of that particular transaction that what was the amount who was the sender who was the receiver what is the description so that's for that purpose we are building this and it's also very important that you have to add these kind of functions in your contract to get the individual data okay so this is what the data we're going to retrieve from this function and we have to check for the length id is less than the transaction length so whatever the id is providing when the transaction will happen the very first transaction that will assign one two and that's how thing will goes on then we have to simply return the entire transaction array so we will pass the transaction and that we have to pass the id and this will give us the data so we have to return the transaction amount we have to return the transaction sender receiver and the timestamp and the descriptions and uh, these all the data we have to receive so this entire things we have to write for the contract now let's test this out <clears throat> so hope this entire things makes sense to all of you guys that what we have done what are the variables we have taken how we are calling the modifier how we are calling the deposit function withdrawal at transaction get transaction get transaction by id now let's test this out so simply copy all of this and by the way if you guys need this smart contract i will provide that on my website simply base it to the altosan there you will find the source code so let's come here and let me minimize this one and i will go back to the remix id here i have the contract so i already have the contract here let me make it full screens let me reload the browser and thus come here go to this honor and this is the accounting contract i have so you can see that I have the entire contract here. We have all of these struct mapping events and all of these functions. So let's simply deploy the contract. Come here. I will go with the very first account. And if I click on this deploy, I don't need to pass any data. You can see that our constructor is absolutely empty. We are not passing anything in our constructor. So click on this deploy. The transaction, 
the transaction went through and here you will have the instant of the contract and all the function we have defined in the contract so if i want to see the owner you can see this is the owner of the contract which is me if you if i call this get transaction right now we have zero transaction and you have to pass the id so if i pass one click on this transaction you can see nothing here because we haven't done any transaction so now what i will do uh, the very first thing i have to do is i cannot call this function deposit i can i can i can call this function deposit so what i will do i'll come here this is the function i have deposit so i'll come here and i'm going to take five ether you can take it way way any ether is totally up to you so five ether i want to deposit click on this deposit the transaction went through and here you will find the five ether we have deposited into the contract so that's working fine now we can call the withdrawal function to withdraw the fund so let's come here um, let's type the amount we want to withdraw so i want to withdraw two three okay that's the amount i want to withdraw click on this withdraw and you can see i have withdraw so right now you can see the amount i have withdraw in terms of way so if you want to withdraw the fund in terms of ether you have to provide 18 zero then you can easily able to withdraw the three ether okay so that's how it looks so withdrawal is also working found now let's come back to the add transaction so let's come here where we have the add transaction click on this and this we have to pass three data we have to pass the receiver amount and the descriptions so the one thing i want to do is i'll come here i'll go back to the account number two he's going to be my receiver and then i will come back to account number one and i will provide the his address i'll provide the amount i want to transfer i'll say let's say 100 and the description i will say bscrib subscribe to my cha and then your channel this is what i'm going to talk and i hope you guys have done that if you haven't make sure to do it click on this transaction and the transaction is went through and if i come here you can see the contract i have transferred the fund into this so that just looks fine and if i come here if i click on this transfer you can find so let me come here this is the get transaction by id so if i pass id one because that's the only transaction we have done call this call and let's see what data we are getting okay so that looks fine to me no more problem we have get the transaction so we have the tra one transaction we have done and we have to pass zero sorry because it's an index space if you click on zero hit it request and here you will find all the data all the transaction we have done earlier i was passing one because of that i was not getting the data because it's an array and array start from zero one two three four and goes like till end okay so we have amount 100 we have the sender we have the receiver we have the timestamp and we have the descriptions so these things looks pretty fine so hope this entire thing makes sense to all of you guys and uh, now you guys have know how to structure the accounting contract and you can build different complexly into this okay so if you guys want me to build a project on top of this then do let me know in the comment section and also let me know that what are the tools and technology you want me to introduce in this particular project so i'll try to include that so that will give you a maximum learning so that's the only thing i want to cover in this video hope you guys have found this video valuable if you still have any confusion and doubt let me know in the comment section i'll try to cover that have a wonderful day bye bye